dive into the living waters of the Word of God on So Says the Lord with Sherry Hales Ministries, where we're learning, living, loving. Now here's your host, Bible teacher, minister, author, Sherry Hales. Well, welcome. Peace, love, and joy to you and your family. I'm so happy you decided to join us today on So Says the Lord with Sherry Health Ministries, where we're learning, living, and loving. So let's dive right into the refreshing living waters of the Word of God. Today we will continue looking at the parabolic discourse found in Matthew 13. Today our focus will be on the teaching about hidden treasure. Our series purpose is to read the words of Christ and Selah, or ponder the meaning and message. Our series scriptural focus is Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The scripture I'll look at today is Matthew 13, 44 and Exodus 19, 1 to 6. If you'll be joining me, you can grab your Bible now. I'll be looking at the King James Version. Any version you have is okay. If it's not King James, it may read a bit differently. Now, if you are also going to join us for our Bible study on this same teaching, you will also read Colossians 1, 1 to 14. Visit my website, www.sherryhealthministries.org. There you will find information about how to participate in the, the Bible study. If this ministry is being a blessing in your life, please consider sowing a seed to help us to continue to spread the Word of God. An overview. Today, as I already said, we'll look at, take a look at Jesus' teaching about hidden treasure. Let's dive right into this teaching right after a brief message. Announcing the launch of the Kind Tree Project program program created to help push back against the pervasive societal ills that plague our towns, in our streets, in our communities. The Kind Tree Project program endeavors to sow flowering seeds of clemency that will spring forth into proficient, restorative branches of civility and compassion for the betterment of our world and posterity. Find out more about the Kind Tree Project program at thekindtreeproject.com. Empathy. Every great and kind leader has been full of it. Empathy. Every wicked, tyrannical leader has been devoid of it. Empathy. Societies flourish because of it. Empathy. Civil society cannot survive without it. The empathic eye, ear, air, ire. Order your copy today. Welcome back. So again, the scripture is Matthew 13, uh, chapter, Matthew, Matthew 13, verse 44. And then after that, we'll look at Exodus 19, 1 to 6. So Matthew 13, 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. So that is 
Matthew 13, 44. And so, um, you know, this parable um, has been related a lot to the value of salvation, that the value of salvation is so great that once it's found, there should be nothing that you possess that you f should feel as if it is a greater treasure than salvation that you should realize that your eternal soul is worth more than anything else and that without salvation your eternal soul is lost and so it's reasonable that it's been interpreted that way um, but we're going to look at it a little closer today. Um, so again, I want to I want to take one more. I'm going to read it again. And again, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid, treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth. So uh, again, the the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field right there is is salvation if this were talking about salvation is salvation hid so you can think about it right there is salvation hid is this something that God hides from people it's not salvation is not hid he, he's not hiding salvation from anyone he wants everyone to be saved so salvation is not hid and then it's talking about in a field now we know that often when the Bible's talking about a field it's referring to the earth so uh, interpreting this to me to say that it's talking about salvation immediately does not quite add up something seems a bit off and then it says that the witch when a man hath found he hideth now again, first of all, God comes, calls every man. He's the one that calls us. We're not going looking for him. Carnal man would never seek out God. God calls to us. So again, that interpretation that it's about salvation somehow seems a bit off. Again, it's not making sense. Salvation is not hid. And, um, and then it says, uh, the which when a man hath found, he hideth. So, so no, no carnal man is looking for God. That doesn't happen. Carnal man does not look for God. God calls us to him. And we have the choice to either respond and accept that call or reject it. But no carnal man is looking for God. It says he hid it. Um, the witch when a man hath found, he hid it. How does that make sense? God does not want us to hide salvation. The Bible says that we are supposed to uh, profess that we are children of God. That if we, in fact, if we don't, if we are ashamed of him, then he's ashamed of us. So again, it doesn't make sense that this would be talking about salvation. Because he wants us to tell people about him. He doesn't want us to be ashamed and hide that if we found salvation and been saved. He doesn't want us to hide that fact. He wants us to share it and tell. So that uh, it will help to draw others to him. Um, and, okay, so he hideth. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath. Again, a man born into this world. What we are is what we are when we enter into this world. When we enter into this world, we don't have anything unless it is given to us. And so what are you going to sell? You don't have anything to sell. In fact, when man comes into this world, he's not even aware of anything because he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what he is. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know anything. A man born into the world knows nothing. That is the state of man unless and until 
he begins to be taught by someone. The original teacher was God. Man knew nothing until God began to teach him and, and tell him things. And we are still in that state today. We enter into this world, we know nothing until we begin to learn. So man, so, so there was nothing and we have nothing. So, so there's nothing that a man would have that he, that he could sell. And who would he sell it to anyway? There's nothing that man has to sell. And then it says, and he buyeth that field. So if the field is again referring to the whole earth, what man can buy the whole earth? So this particular parable being related to salvation just doesn't pass the make sense test. Because it doesn't. If you really look at it, and, and you're thinking about um, referring this, uh, relating this to salvation, it doesn't add up. And so, so we're, we're going to look at this so that we can try to get to the bottom of okay, what is this particular parable actually talking about. So now let's look at the next scripture, Exodus 19, Exodus 19, 1 to 6. Exodus 19, 1 to 6. It says, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And so, so that second scripture, use the word treasure. Again, use the word treasure. And when it used it, it was talking about the children of Israel. So it's referring to the Israelite people as a kingdom and as a treasure. Let me read it again. This time when I read it, uh, I'm going to read it with Israel reference. With Israel reference. Again, the kingdom of the children of Israel is like unto peculiar treasure hid in a field, which when the Son of Man, Jesus, hath found, he hideth unto himself, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath. He did this on the cross at Calvary. And buyeth with his holy blood that field, which is the world. So this parable is talking about Jesus. What he did, his passion, the passion of Christ, his suffering. And he's the one who gave everything 
in order to purchase unto himself his chosen people and all of the people in the field which is the world that would receive him this scripture this parable is talking about redemption Christ paid for our salvation this parable is talking about salvation but it's not talking about us getting salvation on our own it's talking about the how salvation was made available again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field the which when a man hath found the man is Jesus. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. So he's saying that there, there's, see, when Adam, when Adam turned away from God, the whole earth is still here. The whole earth is a field. Adam turned away from God. You know that act broke his heart. Because he had made man to fellowship with him. Man was God's greatest creation. And he was so happy when he made man. He had made all different types of things. And he had made the beings called angels. But he didn't make them in his image and likeness. Man was the only thing that the Bible tells us that he made in his own image and likeness. So man was very special to God, is very special to God. He made us like him so that he could interact with us in a different way than he interacts with the other created beings. He wanted a special relationship with us so that we could actually be his own children. Making man was making a family for himself. He had other things. He had made all different types of things, but he didn't have a family. He, he had the Son, and he had the Holy Spirit, and he had himself, God, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all, all are equal, all are one, so each had the other, but still no family. So he made man so that he could have a family, but Adam did what God said not to do. God said, I'm going to make you, but I'm not going to make you so that you have to be in a relationship with me. I want you to choose if you want to be in a relationship with me. So he let Adam know, um, you know, that he let him know everything. He let him know that without him, that there was death. That life didn't even exist outside of him. He let him know up front. But Adam made the choice to still choose something other than God. And the other thing that he chose, he was convinced. He decided to listen to another voice that was more pers persuasive than the one that it made him. And so he listened to that voice, even though that voice was persuasive, that that voice wasn't the one that it made him. That voice was not the one that it made him. In, in fact, the one he listened to was the one that was inside of himself when God made him. Because God made man with Adam and Eve as one until he took Eve out of Adam. 
So complete man requires the man and the woman. Gender matters. That's why God made the man and inside of him put the woman. That's completion. The man and the woman. Anything else is other. It is not a creation of God. God didn't make it. God only made the man to be complete and right when the man and the woman were one. Man and woman. So we we so we, if we yoke ourselves to anything, it has to be in accordance to the way that he made it, or else it is not the thing that he made because he never made anything other than that. No, he did not. He made nothing other than that. And so Adam chose something different. So it broke God's heart because he he wanted a family. And he knew that outside of him there was nothing but death. And that eventually man would arrive at that place of death. As he journeyed along this path of life. Eventually he would get to, the, to where death was. And that's what would happen to him. He would die. He died spiritually immediately. But the physical death would come. And God wanted his family. His family mattered. His family was important. He didn't make his family as a throwaway. Or if my family rejects me, then, well, forget my family. I'll just go make something else. No, his family mattered to him. So he looked in the field of the world. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hid in a field. He was, his his. His children were treasure to him. Precious, special, valuable, held in high regard and esteem to God. That's how his children were, but Adam turned from him. And so he looked at the field, looking to see if there was one. And it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field. The which when a man hath found, God found. God the man found the one. He found him. He hideth him. He found him. And so he hid him in himself for himself. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had. He had to legally see God honors his own laws. Anyone that does not honor laws are lawless and they belong to the lawless one. Even God honors laws, government, what he puts in place. God honors it. Now we know that God's law is perfect and sometimes man's law is not perfect. But still, the law is to, to be followed unless it is rightly and righteously um, overturned, but not lawlessly, because that's not of God. So God had to legally purchase, man, purchase the field so that he could get to the treasure that he found. So he had to purchase the field with his own blood. That's what he did. On that cross of Calvary, he purchased the whole field back because Adam let the devil have it. So he purchased the whole field back with his own precious blood because he had found a treasure in the people that we know today as the Israelite people. And so all of us need to be mindful. All of us, especially us as Christians, us Christians. That the Israelite people are a peculiar treasure to God. God holds them in high regard. The Bible tells us we are supposed to love the things that God loves. The people that God loves. We are to love them as Christians. We don't speak badly about who 
God loves. And now we as Christians, God made a way so that Gentiles could also be in the fold. And we know that. But the Israelite people belong to God. They are precious in his sight and he loves them. And all Christians should love them too. And God himself, he is of the house of Judah, the tribe of Judah. He was an Israelite himself. And so if we are Christians, we are to love the Israelite people. Now the Bible has prophecies and certain things must come to pass. But God has not left his people. They are still his peculiar treasure. Well, I pray you have enjoyed today's Bible teaching and that your body, soul, and spirit has been refreshed in the Lord. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God. Announcing the launch of the Kind Tree Project program. A program created to help push back against the pervasive societal ills that plague our towns, in our streets, in our communities. The Kind Tree Project program endeavors to sow flowering seeds of clemency that will spring forth into proficient, restorative branches of civility and compassion for the betterment of our world and posterity. Find out more about the Kind Tree Project program at thekindtreeproject.com. Empathy. Every great and kind leader has been full of it. Empathy. Every wicked, tyrannical leader has been devoid of it. Empathy. Societies flourish because of it. Empathy. Civil society cannot survive without it. The empathic eye, ear, air, ire.